Hello everyone, this is Cypher Deck, and today we're back in EverQuest Project 1999. I am on Tortha, and we are in Lesser Fame. So, this is the sister camp. You got anything for me? Nope. It's high corpse looted. And we're going to be trying uh, two things. I'm going to, every time I end a cycle, I am going to be, um... Memming and mem wiping, messing and mem wiping uh, the mob so that I can rest. But I think what we're going to do is instead of using that, um, we're going to try to use our pet because I want to see how strong this pet is. If it's more survivable for me to uh, have my pet or if it's not, because I've been finding that it can be very hard for me to maintain um to maintain a balance between the different mobs so i want to make sure if the pet is strong enough should i be using that or if i should just go with the charm and just deal with it until i get through some levels where it is not as uh mana taxing because that's what it is right now is it's it's totally mana taxing so we now have a uh, um, two mobs up. I'm just going to show you the mezzing, uh, the way that I do it. We're going to mez that mob. Hopefully nothing else spawns. I'm going to tash it. And then I'm going to charm it. And once that becomes unmezzed, I am going to have it attack that mob. Now, you can see my health is low, and that is because these mobs... Um, okay, I need to root. I need to tash. And I need to slow, make sure it... I don't think I need to tash, actually. You must be... Oh, I must be staying. So now what you do is you just come up here and you turn them because your pet has the ability to backstab. And there you go. You can get away. So now I don't trust this pet. <laughs> this is this is like the ultimate uh, annoyance of this. So I'm going to turn that off I am going to then color flux mez as soon as it lets me I am then going to move away actually I'm gonna just leave this real quick because I can and then if I want to I can go ahead and load a uh, membler but there is a chance that mez will membler without me having a membler if it doesn't though then we're gonna uh, see there we go so that's done i'm good with that now let's try this pet because i haven't tried this before maybe this is the better way to go i have no clue but what i am going to do is i am going to give it a weapon we'll give it this weapon and a torch by the way the ranger station here and make sure if you're a dark elf that you change into anything other than a dark elf but you should be able to go ahead and buy torches there so if you don't have a torch just go that route all right so uh now that we have three sisters up i should probably wait until i have a little bit more health but i am going to lull these guys uh, that one resisted. That one resisted as well. Wow. This is just killing my mana. Okay, there we go. Jayla, just come on. Oh, work with. 
she is now, and then I'm going to slow pull Jayla. Of course, it was resisted. Come on, pet. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm gonna root. And let's see how much damage she does to the pet. She's doing a decent amount. I'm gonna try to slow her now. There we go. So the pet sucks. <laughs> Essentially is what's happening here is that the pet sucks. So I need to change that out. I need to get Mumbler working on getting up. Because that pet is about to die. And once... Uh, once... Okay, here we go. We're going to mess her. And I'm going to Mumbler. And I'm going to move away. Alright, I believe that should resolve the issue. If not, this is going to suck. <laughs> I am bound right nearby. So if I die, there's no issue with that. So the way to go is make sure I have at least 50% mana. Then start charm kiting, or not charm kiting, but um, killing with charm. I also need to probably pick up some bandages because that's going to help me as well. Try to stay alive. So let me get some hit points and mana up and we'll start killing the cycle. All right. So as you can see, after the beginning of the video, I did end up dying. I did speed it up a little bit so that we could get back into the fight. And uh, you wouldn't have to be bored with me um, slowly getting all my spells back in and getting back set up. So a little bit after this portion, I am talking to um, Black Thrones. He is the one that I was grouped with in the last video. And I ended up going and getting him on Fever. Brought him over and just really made this a whole lot easier than before uh, not only was he able to heal me but he was also able to slow as well and we were able to do these flawlessly without ever being in danger of dying we also worked together to make sure that if I was going to be keeping a pet up or if I wasn't going to be keeping a pet like um, for a small duration I was just keeping a pet up and waiting for the cycle, so we were only killing three. Later on, we decided that we would kill all four of them, so try to let my pet get hurt a little bit on the last mob that they were fighting, and then we would finish it off. So it ended up being a really good toss-up, and you're seeing here that I was able to uh, start getting to a point where I could do the cycle pretty easily. That said, it could have been harder, <laughs> or it also could have been easier if I would have allowed myself to get full mana before I uh, started everything up. So in this video, I, I have to be honest, we're not going to be getting to 16. That said, I am going to try to get 16 within the next few days. It really depends on the time that I can play, also the availability of the camp really is not uh, uh, an option to find uh, there it, <laughs> let me restate that there is no other camp that I can do in the zone I believe without um, without me messing with some sort of faction that I need or uh, that um, is going to be green experience. So I ended up staying here for a while, and you can see now that he, uh, that Black Thrones is with me, and my health is full, <laughs> and it just uh, becomes a whole lot easier. One of the things we had to get acclimated to is that he, um, I think he didn't understand what I was doing some of the time, like there would be times where I'm moving 
um, to put my pet down and um, he would move with me and that's I, I mean that's okay it's cool uh, it's just that um, I guess I was relaying to him what I was doing uh, but in the end we ended up getting into a really good functional cycle of getting things done uh, in a moment here, I'm going to show you a cycle that we did, and then I also wanted to talk about merchants. Because of the fact that you were looting all this heavy loot, which every, not every, a good portion will be dropping some kind of bronze weapon. If they aren't holding a weapon at all, that is a really good pet to put a weapon on. So... If I could find one of them that spawned without a weapon in their hand, that one is one I'd probably go ahead and keep. I would um, member it at the end of a cycle, that way they could heal up and I wouldn't have to deal with the threat of them coming at me. But uh, it, it, was, um, it, it then comes back to, do I get three mobs worth of experience or do I only get the... or, or or do I get the four? And it was better if we would have gotten four throughout because of the fact that it is duo. We're not getting the same experience as if we were soloing. But um, while Dark Thrones is not looking like he has a lot of armor on, he's pretty strong. So he can actually probably do, do this camp solo. And of course, uh, after... I get to a point where I have broken the camp, I can do it pretty easy as well. One thing I notice is that even when I, or I broke the camp, we weren't killing fast enough to get back around to where we were able to pull singles every time. We always had um, Tayla, I think is her name, and Jayla spawning almost back to back. So it, it's just, I guess, time trying to get it set up but uh in the end we did pretty well i uh i really enjoy this spot it's really good if you have to afk kill but i'm going to probably uh take the advice of a friend who said to try to uh check out najina but it is also possible for me to go to unrest and solo in the um in the garden so if you if you go in oh, i guess i would show you in a video but if you go into unrest and instead of going straight to the the uh, the house you would go to the right or left uh at the maze and you'd follow that wall all the way around and then you just kill there that said there are a lot of mobs and they will train on you uh it would probably be best if you have someone with you because it can get really mana intensive trying to lock down all the mobs while you're killing. Also, the pets there aren't as strong as these are because of the fact that they don't have backstab and other things along those lines. But yeah, it was it was a really solid camp. I really had a lot of, of fun here, especially whenever I was not just sitting here talking to myself. <laughs> whatever you're doing and anything I think that is kind of more entertaining to yourself than than actually uh, standing there solo so it, it, it really was pretty entertaining so as you'll see we're about to pull I think the last mob and then I'm going to head over and do um, sell all the stuff that I have looted and the way we're doing it is I would loot for a while, and then he would loot for a while, and I would loot for a while, and so on, back and forth. So we always had one of us here at the camp holding it, while the other one would go and sell. And it just worked out uh, easy that way. I made probably a good, um, I don't know, There's the weapons themselves, they can sell for a different variance. I think the rapiers themselves sell for around 6 plat. Uh, if you, oh, okay, so <laughs> let me stop that for a second. As you'll see, um, when you are looking away from where the sisters are, 
you'll run until you can see the Dark Elves on your right hand side. And if you go diagonal from there uh, to the left, you will find the Ranger Station, which is what we're about to do right now. You could, we'll see the Orcs first, and then we'll push around, I think, one more hill past this. We'll see the Dark Elves, then we'll turn left. And then we will uh, see it. So you'll see here, I'm now going to turn left in a diagonal. And no matter um, how sharp or anything, you just need to make sure that you're slowly looking around and uh, you'll find it. Inside of the big building, you will have a merchant just right here. And I think I ended up alliancing, but you don't have to. Uh, I think I was doing it just trying to get better uh, better money for the items I was selling. I don't know if there's a better modifier as far as charisma, if there's an actual charisma booster for selling. I haven't got to that point, of course, but uh, it was, it was uh, nice to be able to come here. Now... On a Necromancer or an Ogre or anything else that is not liked here, you would go to Steamfont. You would bind yourself at the camp, run to Steamfont, sell it to Druid Rings, and then you would come back uh, by gating. You would make sure that you're bound there. If you're a Warrior, then, well, I guess you have to run both ways. So, there's that. But either way, this is it. Uh, we only got almost uh, to level 14. So I'm going to continue at it. Maybe the next time I get on, I will already be 16. But this is how I'm going to most likely do it. If for any other reason or anything changes where I'm going to be moving, you will know. <laughs> but for now... This is the camp that you can do all the way up to 16. It really just depends on how patient or how AFK friendly you want to be. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. This is Cypher Deck. Peace out.